board and he said, wow, what, the wind's not blowing, very calm, and they were enjoying the day. Our title today is Jesus in the Book of Revelation. I have given you a handout. The second page shows you the entire outline of the book of Revelation. I'm not going to go through it, so we don't have time to do it all, but at least I gave an outline. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you. Our gracious Father, we're so thankful to be here this morning. Thank you for your love. We pray for our pastor, Curtis and his family situation, and with Delia. Give her recovery strength. We saw her last night, Lord, and she still is recovering, and we ask the blessing upon their son as well. Now, Father, let your words be in my mouth and in our discussion. We help love Jesus in this study. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Jesus in the book of Revelation. We need to take a look at chapter 1. Who would like to read chapters 1, verse 1 and 2? I'm going to put you on the spot and have you read a little bit. Yes. Say, uh, brother, uh, Revelation 1 1. Revelation 1 1 and verse 2 as well. What's, 
Why do you think a special blessing is attached to the reading of this book? That a book. Maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself. Please, go ahead. What did you ask? Hmm? Sorry, what did you ask? I asked, uh, why do you think a special blessing is attached to the reading and hearing of the prophetic book? What is the book of Revelation for? To reveal the truth and to learn from the ancient mistakes that the Israelites made mistake. And, uh, and as uh, um, they uh, could not reach the promised land because uh, of the so many mistakes, so we can learn from that. And another I think uh, Paul tried to prove uh, through the history the line of his uh, people when he tells the story of uh, Israel, ancient Israelites and the line through, through the centuries to the Christians, the converted Christians can claim they are the children of God today. So Paul tried to prove that. Right. And one thing I want to go back to the above text. The revelation of Jesus Christ. If I rephrase that, the Jesus Christ's revelation. I can be a son of a king or a king's son. It is a it's a genitive case in the English as well as in the in the Greek shows possession. So, could it be that now revealing the revelation about Jesus Christ, but also through Jesus Christ? Yes. It's both about, through, and of. Yes. Let's remember that because Jesus is God in the flesh, the incarnation, he had a pre-existence. He is God. So the Father entrusted the Son with this revelation. And it's fascinating because from the time of the Reformation, we had the, the anointed and good scholarship that brought us even further into later centuries. And then for us, uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we also had the additional blessing of the gift of prophecy, which was especially manifest in the life of Ellen G. White. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the understanding of the scholarship about the revelation of and about Jesus that was passed on to us, the interpretation, uh, we also have that renewed uh, Reformation idea. And, and may I say, with, with care, may I say, some additional understanding that others do not possess that we as a church have tried to maintain. It's important because there are many confusing ideas about what he said and why he said it, about the symbols and the creatures and the dating and the time and so on in the book of Revelation. So it is a book that does require considerable study and prayer and and I would also add, and we should avoid the kind of dogmatism that others have shown in earlier centuries, and even today, with their understanding of Revelation. We should offer the truth as we understand it with modesty and with a certain humility. As confident as we are, it's important that we present that message that way. And also have an open mind yes. in future prophecies. We think things may happen. I mean, John Wesley looked at the 1260 uh, day prophecy. He says, I don't know what's going to happen then, but something's going to happen. Yeah, you see, yeah. I have a book called The Five Kingdoms, written in 1883. And this lady, not a member of her church back then, but traced it so far, but we don't know for sure. We have to keep be open as a result. And very true to keep that situation here. 
Now, let's look at Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. Who would like to read that? Yes. For I testify to everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. What book is it referring to? The Bible. The or is it Revelation? I think so. We're going to be good John for it. <coughs> now let me read if you Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 14, 15 to give you some little more light on what we're looking at here. Verse 14 says, I know whatever God does it shall be forever. Nothing to be added to it and nothing to be taken away from it. God does it that men should fear for him. That which has already been and what is to be has already been and God requires an account of what is past. Let me go back even further back in time. Deuteronomy 4.2 and he's talking to the nation of Israel at this point. Verse 2 says, You shall not add the word which I command you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I commanded you. So what it's saying to me in that verse in Revelation is what, when God says it, is it our arbitrary will to try to change it, has mankind tried to change it in the past? Yes. yes. The French Revolution. What did they do with the Bible? Burned them. Mm -hmm. Rejected God. They went to a 10 day week as a result. Mm -hmm. And the horses and the animals couldn't take it. They were used to the seven day cycle of the rest. They have on the weekend. So why when God says it, we don't try to change it. Adolf Hitler tried to change it. He said, I'm going to conquer the world. He came across Napoleon's tomb about Daniel 2. But they shall not cleave together. That earth would be still divided. He says, so what would God? I don't need God. I'll do it my own way. What happened? He took his own life. He was fighting against God. Yes, he was. And we have many cases throughout history where men have tried to change things. But God says, don't take away. Don't add to it. And we have to trust God completely in our walk with Him. I just want to drive this out. So we see in other scriptures that we don't add to it or even want to subtract from it. So I would generally would say that Revelation 22, 18, and 19 probably applies to the whole world. Yes? If you actually look in the words in the back, it says the book, and if you cross-reference that, it goes to Biblios. So he is referring to the Bible. Okay. Concordance. Okay. Good. Biblios. That's great. Okay. Very well. But people do say, well, that means the revelation about God has stopped at the end of Revelation. Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no. 
know, he still reveals things to men's minds. I think of Martin Luther. His message was what? Justification by faith. Others were brought into me about the righteous by faith. Others about the Sabbath. All through the centuries, there's been a group of people who have kept the Sabbath, as history portrays. Now we move to the images of Revelation. Let's take a look at Revelation 1, verse 5, and verse 7. Who has that? And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Firstborn of the dead. I know there were people that was resurrected before Christ was resurrected. Lazarus. But he didn't, he didn't, he, he wasn't resurrected to an immortal body, did he? Still was an earthly body as a result. We have Moses. Moses. God took him out of the grave to heaven. But very few, there have been two translated people. Who were they? Elijah and Amy, as a result. Okay, now, verse 7 talks about Christ to come out. Yes. And in Matthew 24, 27, I'll read that. From as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so I will, will be the coming of the Son of Man be. And in verse 30 says, Then there will be a sign of the Son of Man that will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. I would love to be there. See, them, see that happen. When Christ comes, brightness, isn't it? What happens to the mountains? They're reshaped, aren't they? Islands disappear, right? As a result. And the wicked will run for the lives and ask for the rocks for the mountains to fall on them. Yes, ma'am. So the thought comes to me how to avoid an explosion or exclusion from heaven, just like uh, Israelites were excluded from the promised land. How can we avoid? So you have mentioned uh, Jesus Christ, the revolution of uh, Jesus Christ, who satisfied the uh, the claim of the broken laws, law by his blood offering redemption and um, look upon him constantly and um, day by day self-denial. Satan tries to influence the mind of people. Self-denial is not enough. Yes. The first thing, to self-denial is very important. 
and to look upon him daily, day by day, and overcome by, by uh, uh, showing to others how to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and uh, only by serving others to show them, demonstrate with my life how to overcome. And the power of the land, the redeeming power of the land, satisfies us and can take us only by faith to the promised land. Right. And an example of that was the free Hebrews. When they were confronted, you didn't bow down to the image. That became an education. I'll give you another opportunity. No, you don't need to. Hmm. We will not serve your God. And if it's so that you throw us in the fire furnace, if God will not deliver us, so be it. But if he will, so be it. They could not be moved. And they overcome. And as a result, you know the story. They were thrown in. Fourth being was there. And they came back out. And Nebuchadnezzar says, there is one like the Son of Man. So, we're going to have to come to a place in our lives, like one person said, I would be afraid to look at the fire furnace if I was the, the three men. I'd look to Jesus for my source of strength as a result. Okay? Revelation 19, verses 11 through 15. Who would like to read that? You said 19? Yes. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Could we continue to verse 15? Did I not get it? I'm just not hearing you. Know, okay. Just... I asked for Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 15. Oh, 11 and 15. Chapter 19. Yes. Yeah. We'll go to somebody else because it's going to be. Okay. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he sat, who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Nebuchadnezzar recognized that when he was in the wilderness, he grass like an ox or a cow or whatever, he gave credit to God, even though Nebuchadnezzar was the king. He recognized that much higher power. And I'm going to mention Revelation chapter 5. Christ is referred as to what? They were saying, who could open the scroll? Who in the universe can open the scroll? And there was one standing by the throne as a lamb. Jesus is like John says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's a reference to Jesus as well. And then in Revelation 22, 13 says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end first and last. What is alpha? Beginner. What is the huh? letter? Alpha. 
It's the first letter in the Greek language. They have 24 characters. Omega is the last letter in the alphabet. Jesus says, I'm the bookends of the process of the great controversy and also of the universe. I started it. I will end it. But he is the end that will give us salvation forever. So we've gone from the images of Christ. Uh, the lesson that I have deviates a little bit from your lesson. Uh, Derek Morris goes into Revelation 12. Revelation of the books of all the chapters of Revelation. Chapter 12 is a key point about what's happening in God's universe. Let's take a look at chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. Tom, would you like to read that? What's the verse? Verses 1 to 6 of chapter 12. Doesn't apply to a 
single church. Many of the churches came way down in time. Doesn't apply to that either. But, as you said, it is God's people. And every persuasion, how he will draw them back to him. And who is the red dragon? Got a dual meaning. What nation had red dragons on their shields? Rome. Yeah. Rome. Yeah. And the second and the primary is Lucifer. Yeah. He's called the red dragon as well. Yeah. And there was war in heaven. And Michael fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail for fear of them in the heaven any longer. So great the dragon was cast out of old and called the devil, saying, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard with a loud voice, now salvation and strength, kingdom of our God, power of Jesus Christ. That's come. Accuser of brethren who accused him for God day and night. It's cast down. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, all sympathy of heaven, of the angels, possibly the beings of the other world, was gone. They could see the true nature, what Lucifer was trying to do. And he's called the word from the beginning. And now, He's cast to this earth totally. Mm -hmm. But what is he doing to the church? Still persecuting, right? Still destroying people's lives. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get back at God because he's so angry that God special regarded his children. If I can't get to God, can't get to Jesus, I'm going to attack his children to hurt God. Lucifer has portrayed God as an evil dictator of God that he'll punish the wicked forever and ever. Is that true? No. But it is God. That is a God of love. And he wants to bring this mess to an end. But he's given us every opportunity to share this word, the good news to those we come in contact and to Allow the Holy Spirit to convict the hearts of men and women. We can't do it. We're only just vessels in His hands. And I pray that He'll give us the strength from day to day to ever to keep what Tom says. Remember what you said, Tom? Yes. Study the Word? Yes. And pray. And the second one? Pray. Pray. And for our evangelistic meetings or visitations, we need to be in deep prayer. Let the Holy Spirit and the angels will go ahead of us to touch the hearts of the ah! And third, it's to share to those we come in contact. It is my privilege to say the great reward that Jesus will give us is not the rewards of what we've done. Repeat that. The rewards that Jesus gives is not what we've done, even though we've done right. It is the greatest reward is having Jesus on this earth and his Father and to share time with him forever. It's the greatest reward we can have. Let's start our heads with prayer. Our gracious Father, we're so thankful that you're the God who reveals dreams. I know the things that belongs to you, belongs to you, but things that you reveal for our, for our benefit. We thank you for the books of Daniel, Revelation, and other passages throughout the Bible that you can reveal to us your will. Help us to be faithful. Help us to trust you completely as we walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.